And we're back with a quick channel update. Uh, first up, let's have a quick go over the spam. There's like, there was a, a big issue with spam on YouTube there. About started about eight weeks ago, and YouTube have finally sorted out and ironed out the kinks, it seems, because I'm not getting any more. At least for the last three, four days, I haven't had to clear out uh, uh, masses of spam comments. But as I was clearing through them, I was looking at all the names that were showing up, because they seem to have a lot of unique accounts. Like, I had something like 360 or something blocked at one point. And I was just looking at the names going, well, why did they choose these names? And this sort of made me curious. So I did have a bit of a spreadsheet. Now, I only had about 300 or so data points to work with here. But the most popular names I could find that they were using on all these accounts were Mia, Rita, Sherry, Norma, Phoenix, Leia, and Leia, L-A-Y-A-L-A, Lila? Damn it. Layla. I looked it up. Layla. And then Anne. And then after that, it, it kind of drops off dramatically. Now, do bear in mind, this is just from a limited sample that I got. So then that got me curious as to why they were choosing names like this. You have to imagine, if they're going to all this effort to spam people and putting in all of this work, I mean, they've got to be, they can't just be picking these out of a hat. Like, are these ex-girlfriends or something? Or, or what are they doing here? So I, I started figure, trying to figure out what was the popularity range. Now, Mia... This is pretty much just a straight up slam dunk. From what I can see here, this name is incredibly popular. Uh, it's been in the top 10 list for the last 10 years or so, but I'm thinking, what? why is this up here? I mean, anyone you know who'd be called Mia would would be only like 10 years of age right now, or the majority of would be 10, maybe like 15, 16. This seems like a weird, odd one to go with. Now, when you check out the popularity of this, it seems is very popular in the United States. Eh, that might make it. Maybe they're targeting people from the United States. This is going to be a running theme with a lot of these names, except for Rita. I can't wrap my head around Rita. This peaked in popularity back in the 1930s, then again in the 1960s, and popularity-wise, this name is more popular in Brazil. Brazilians prefer this name more than, than the States, so I'm not quite sure why Rita is on this list at all, or why they're using Rita. Bearing in mind, Rita is the second most popular according to this one. So. Why? All the people who'd be Rita that you might possibly know are like 50 years old, probably. I, I just, I can't get it. I haven't been able to wrap my head around Rita yet. I'm still, I'm still trying to come to grips with that one. Then comes Norma. And I was just thinking, why would you put in a Norma there? I mean, I kind of get the Mia. I don't get the Rita at all at all. But the Norm, Norma just sounds like, well, you know Norm, that guy from Cheers? That was my first thought. Plus, this name's popularity peaked in the 1930s. Don't know what's going on there. This just makes no sense to me. Then we've got Sherry. This peaked in popularity in 19... in the mid-60s. So, I, I have no idea what's going on here. Though, should point out, yeah, like most of the others, this one, uh, massively popular in the US. So, probably targeting people in the United States? Maybe? Or maybe they're encouraging people to click on it? Uh, no idea. Then we've got Phoenix. Uh, uh, bear in mind, these graphs are not to scale with each other. So, this one has a popularity of about, like, up to 6,000 people. Like, that's 6,000 is the max ever got it in one year. This one's 10,000. Rita is going up as far as 15,000 apiece. And Mia is maxing out about 30. So, we're, we're going down the list here in terms of popularity. So, by the time we get to Sherry, we're already way down in the popularity list. And then we hit Phoenix, and we're drip, dipping below 2,000 here. As well as that, it's that's the boys. So, there's actually less girls who have the name Phoenix. So, I'm not even sure what that's doing here at all at all. And this is like the top 10 or the top 100 girls' names for like the world and US. So I'm not sure what they're doing here. There's plenty of names to pick from. So then, oh yeah, we got La La Leia. So Leia here, very popular name as well, but the same as Mia. It's like one of those ones that's just gotten popular recently. And it's not even as popular as Mia. Look, it's like it hits about 10,000. This one. Me, it was up at 30,000. I, I I don't know. I, I threw in Anne as well because it was just below the 30 mark and Anne seems reasonably popular, but its its popularity has plunged recently, so I'm... God knows. So then I'm thinking, maybe, maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. Maybe I should be looking for most popular stripper names, right? Maybe that's what they were going for? I mean, okay, I, I was grasping at straws here. So then I started going through, and the only one that showed up that I found on the list was Leia. So Leia is actually on the list and is a popular stripper name, which, okay. But also the third thing then was the top 40 most popular male stripper names. So I kind of just had to go have a look at that one just, just because. Turns out there's two names on this list that's also on the most popular women's list, which, okay, that was fun. The, one of them is Dallas. So Dallas is on both the lists. Where is it? Yeah, there's a Dallas up here as well. And then there's Angel on this list, which is also a female stripper's name as well. So... If you're an angel or a Dallas, you could be both a male or a female stripper, which, you know, who knew? 
Also, for anyone who's watched Lucifer, it turns out, yes, Trixie is a stripper name. What do you know? Also, one last thing. Not only is Dallas on here, but so is Houston. And I believe, I believe there's a Houston, Texas and a Dallas, Texas. So, well, is, is there just like an excess of strip joints in, in Texas or something that I'm not aware of? You know what? That, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. But now I know that the highest amount of strip clubs per capita in the USA is Portland. I had no idea. I didn't even know what state that was in up until recently. Anyway, uh, what's this going to do to the use of these names? I mean, if if you're if you were thinking of calling your kid Mia, and then you find out that wait, this is being used by spammers a lot. Are you, you going to call your kid Mia anymore, or Rita, Sherry, Norma? Is this going to like adversely affect the naming pool? I don't know. All I know for sure is I get distracted really easily and I should probably get on with my day. During the last channel update, I requested people run a benchmark save of Ani and basically time how long it took them to run a certain amount of time in game. And we got a fair few results. There's 146 results here. We even got some Linux and Apple Macs in there as well. Now, the big question, of course, for uh, a lot of the people who are hardcore into their CPUs and stuff would be who won, AMD or Intel? Well, Intel. Intel kicked but I think there's only like one Ryzen in the top few here. Though I think, yeah, two of these are actually repeats, but yeah, don't, don't worry about it too much. We're not going to be getting too deep into uh, settings and timings and all sorts of things here. This is just a broad general overview. So, you know, massive warning of, I am going to be generalizing a lot. So if you're, if you're angry about some of the things I say, that's fine. That's what comments are for. You can go scream down there. It's, it's perfectly okay. But uh, let's go break things down. There's AMD, and what I loved about them was they were incredibly consistent. Now, what I've done here is I've excluded the top two results. The top two results were tweaked. 99% of people don't do any tweaking to their computers. They just turn them on, they want them to work, and they don't go messing around with things. Uh, make of that what you will. Basically, pick yourself up one of the 5000 series processors, stick in some RAM that's at least 3200 megahertz to 3600 megahertz, and you're golden. That's pretty much what happened here and why all of these are, well, so close together. Well. 15 seconds is not so close together, but you need to take into account the human error that's going to be going on here. For example, my PC I ended up buying is I did actually go up with a 5900X and I threw in 3600 megahertz RAM. And if I restart my computer, I do a fresh restart, I can get about 109 seconds and change. And I can do that consistently. I've, I've tested it three times in a row. However, if I don't restart my computer, run my computer for a while and go in and just run a test, I can get 112 to 113 seconds. So if we go back to the AMD benchmark over here, I can get pretty much top of the line if I restart my PC. If I don't, I end up down between here and here somewhere. So that was just with restarting. If you're running any mods and you didn't restart your, turn off your mods before you ran the test, some people lost up to four or five seconds doing that. There's all sorts of things that can slow you down just a bit. Do you have anything else running in the background? So this sort of range here was not unexpected, but consistency is king. And if you'll check in this section here, which is 110 to 112, all the top performers, they're all either 5800 or 5900Xs, and all of them had RAM speeds of about 3600 megahertz. Actually, that one had 34 just down here. So this is why I decided that I was going to get something in this range, 5800 to 5900 megahertz, and speeds in about this. Just the way it worked out. It just seemed like this was consistent, and the results I got when I finally put the PC together seems to back it up. It works just fine. This, of course, begs the question, what's going on down here? Like, these ones are all 10 seconds outside of the normal range, 10 to 15 seconds outside of the normal range for the processors they have and the RAM. I can almost understand this one. This is 24 megahertz RAM, so this is much lower RAM speeds, and this, this will come into play a lot more when we have a quick glance at Intel. But, yeah, I'm not sure why some of these people are getting such low speeds. Maybe check your XMP settings to make sure they're enabled. On my PC, XMP is what you do to enable your full RAM speeds. Your RAM is going to default to 2133 unless you enable this XMP setting in your BIOS. If I did not enable it, I would have times of 130 seconds, which is just ridiculous. All I had to do was go in and turn on one thing in the BIOS and I went from 130 seconds to 110. That's, that's insane. The Intel section was more interesting yet far, far, far more confusing. Oh my god. Um, all right, let, let me just g give you some random examples here. Uh, we've got 105 and 106 seconds here. These are excellent times. They're amazing. You've got to bear in mind your AMD are hitting about 110 at tops, assuming you get, like, you know, good stuff going on. So over here, we've got a 105 and a 106 for the Intel i9-11900Ks. And these are both submitted by two separate people, and both of them have RAM timings of 3200 megahertz, and they're getting used, like, just... If this is out of the box performance, this is incredible. This means they're kicking the absolute snot out of uh, any AMD competition. 
The only problem is I've only got two samples to work with. <laughs> For example, if I just do a quick search, yeah, they were the only two 11900K submitted. I've, I've got nothing else to work with on that front, which gets confusing. Okay, so let's try this next section, which is the i7s, the 10, the 10700 kit series. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those to work with. And I should probably point out one, two of those actually belong to the same guy. Actually, and two of those. Yeah, so I think this is like three different people. It's just there's multiple submissions. Uh, for example, FG Praxis did a bunch of testing with different things. So we don't have like a white, we don't have the same sort of uh, consistency going on as we have here where we can compare things evenly. They're a lot more spread out. There are a few things here that do pop out though. These uh, number seven and number 20 were both submitted by the same person, De Denzin, De Dexin, De never mind. Um, first one they did, they had RAM that was 32 or 3000 megahertz. And then what they did was they basically spent 200 bucks, upgraded their RAM to 4000 megahertz, and it increased their speeds from 119 seconds to 111. Now that's a 6.7% increase. And it was like, well, is it worth it? Is it not? Putting a quick pin in that question. Let's have a look at FG Praxis here, who also did a whole bunch of testing. Everything here remains the same pretty much, except for the RAM. They went from 3200 megahertz, and then with a little bit of tweaking and overclocking, they went to uh, 3466, then 3733, and then 3733 with slightly tighter timings. And each one gained them a few seconds. There seems to be a consistent across all of the Intel chips, Faster RAM, in general, usually gives you better speeds, with oxygen not included. When it came to the AMD chips, they seem to max out about 32 to 3600. AMD has this Infinity Fabric thing, which is a memory manager, and yeah, even overclocking that and messing around with it, you can't really seem to gain much benefit past 32 to 3600 megahertz. I mean, going past 3600 megahertz does not seem to make any sort of difference, so paying for RAM better than that is just wasting money. Intel, on the other hand, seems to be able to glean benefits right up until like the 4000 megahertz mark. Maybe even more, I'm not sure. You'll notice that the person in 103 seconds has 4,500 megahertz memory. Though, yeah, they were they were pumping voltages through there that would make most people sweat. Another quick side note here, this person, Ragukorth, never mind. They managed to overclock their RAM and their CPU, which took them from 134 seconds to 123. There is a lot of overhead for improvement with Intel. You can overclock stuff, it seems, and definitely grab, squeeze just that a little bit more performance out of oxygen not included. So a quick summary of what does all of this information tell us? Before we go into the funny bits, there's a few funny asides in here. Um, well, from what I can tell, if you really want to go with Intel, your best bet is probably the 11900K. But bear in mind, I've only got two pieces of info to go on here. As well as that, if you could maybe get rid of the 3200MHz RAM and crank it up to 3600MHz, you might actually be doing pretty damn well. That just seems like best out-of-the-box performance. If you're looking for overclocking, then it seems... Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to try and give recommendations on that. You can look through the data yourself and figure it out, because if you're willing to do the overclocking, you should probably be willing to do an awful lot more digging, because it's, it's pretty tough. When it comes to AMD, they seem to be, well, reasonably consistent in that all of them are not going to do anything too exceptional. Uh, just grab yourself a 5600X is probably more than sufficient, 3200 megahertz of RAM, and you'll probably end up around the 114, 115 mark, somewhere around here pretty handily for a reasonable price. But then that, that begs the question, was it worth it? Uh, this RAM upgrade over here cost $200 and gave them a 6.7% increase in performance now, bearing in mind, that's if you're running flat out. So if they're running uh, a game of Oni and it's late game enough that they've actually got slowdown happening and they're running it on triple speed. So for niceness, let's just say they spend one hour a day gaming and half the time they're gaming, they're playing Oni on maxed out speeds and it's so late in the game that, you know, so this is three and a half hours a week of them playing on maxed out speeds. How much time is that worth? Well, I did a bunch of math and it turns out it's about 14 minutes a week or 56 and a half minutes a month. And then I'm thinking, well, just say you decided to keep this keep this upgrade for two years before you upgrade your PC. That's a, I think that's a reasonable assumption. That would work out as you would save, if assuming you played seven hours a, a week on average and only three and a half hours of that actually required that it was giving you the bonus speed, you'd be looking at about saving 22 and a half hours every couple of years. Now, I really need to stress here, you're actually saving yourself time while you're playing. It's not like you're getting these extra frames uh, in, say, a first-person shooter where you get extra frames per second, which really don't do you much good, to be honest. What you're actually gaining here is time. 
what's happening here is it's faster for you to play the game, meaning instead of it taking, well, 119 seconds to do half a cycle in oxygen not included, it's going to take you 111. So you've literally saved yourself eight seconds of your own time so the game is running faster. And over the course of two years, you'd save yourself 22 and a half hours, which means you'd get in 22 and a half hours more gaming in the same amount of time. So is that worth 200 bucks to you? Uh, I can't answer that question. <laughs> That, that would be up to you to decide. Now, I should point out as well, uh, when I didn't have XMP on, it took my save about ooh, 11 seconds longer to load as well. So having a faster PC will allow you to load games faster. And in the case of games like simulation games, like Oxygen Not Included, Factorio, maybe even Satisfactory, I'm going to get some of the 4X games as well. And as an educated guess, I'm guessing some of the Civs, Endless Legends, uh, campaign maps on a lot of those uh, 4X strategy games, they're all going to benefit from this kind of uh, PC build. So I'm guessing, yeah, I, I would definitely be down for that. But then again, I, I do play a lot of games. But side notes, there was a few interesting things in here. Like, there's a laptop. There's an Alienware 51M or 2 laptop uh, by Screwy Girl. And it's got 118 seconds on it. I, I seriously did not think a laptop would ever score that highly. Though then again, I'm, I'm not sure if this is blurring the line between what's a laptop and what's basically a portable desktop at that, st at that stage. Uh, another fun little tidbit was, where is it? Yes, down here we have a Xeon 6138F engineering sample QL1L. Uh, according to the notes, yeah, I have a weird computer. You'd be surprised how well this games. You know, I would be very surprised. That is that is an odd little processor. I have no idea how you had, how you got your hands on an engineering sample, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's weird. Also, who has 128 gigabytes of quad channel DDR3? <laughs> um... That's a lot of memory with a dual Xeon, uh, like a dual Intel Xeon E5. I don't even know what half this stuff is, but I'm pretty sure some of this stuff should be on display somewhere doing something. Under the AMD section, we have the odd little war crime here. Like this laptop, the Lenovo Legion 5, seems XMP isn't supported on this laptop too. So this was sold with 32 megahertz RAM, 32,000 megahertz RAM. Unfortunately, because it doesn't support XMP, that RAM can only ever work at 2133 because that's all the motherboard supports. Yet they still sold them the swanky expensive stuff. That's just evil. And that's not the only occurrences of that. That this is probably still happening today. Well, Intel released that new Alder Lake architecture, which is like a whole new generation of stuff. They'll have faster memory speeds, all this kind of things. Unfortunately, I'm not a bajillionaire, so, you know, can't really go around testing that stuff out. But hey, if anyone wants to run some tests using the new stuff, if you've got the hardware, go for it. I I'd love to see the results. I'm pretty sure it'll kick the snot out of everything on any of these lists. Assuming you can afford to buy this stuff, um, it is still pretty expensive right now. As for what's coming up next, uh, Mondays and Thursdays are going to be satisfactory. It uh, kind of came out on top on that poll. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays will be RimWorld, and then Wednesdays I'm going to try and get in either a tutorial, maybe a base level, something like that. I want to fill something in on the Wednesdays as well, so I'm going to add about five videos a week. That's the plans. Let's, let's see if I can stick to that. Anyway, I... Uh, Hope you enjoyed and good luck.